Hello guys and welcome back to Onto Your Talk. It's the most low-key, laid-back podcast that talks about exhibition for the last house. It's been so long and all we've talked about is exhibition. I don't even remember what we used to talk about. Yeah, I be like I believe the last six weeks have been just straight exhibition. Like Oh well, yeah, it is week six of exhibition, so that would do it. Yeah. Oh, it might have been seven weeks because we didn't. Did we do one about like the draft and everything? I don't know. I don't oh, remember. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. We did a special one for the draft. Which yeah. We got completely wrong, but anyway, this is the second. No, it's not even the second to last week of exhibition. It's the second to last week that we'll have a full eight games because then uh, playoffs will start and it'll be the, only be like four games of PU. So that that'll be a little better. But uh, yeah, same deal. We're just gonna run through all the games chronologically. First up, we have Tasker versus Exaline. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't remember who X, which team Exaline's on because he's not obviously the normal PU slot. Okay, he's on the Magnets, right? And he's still in PU uh, this week as well. Uh, the Magnets are the team with Sam I Am and Robert Alphonse. Yep. And they they didn't start. Robert Alphonse, no, they didn't start Sam I Am last week, and they didn't start either this week. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, um, they probably just want a little break, probably, if I, if I had to guess. Yeah, I, I would assume it's like a break or something, because neither of them were doing that badly, I don't think, question yeah, mark. No, I think Robert the teams... Alphonse, Alphonse was doing really well. Yeah, uh, I think the Sam, team, Sam well, I'm the sure. team overall... Yeah, okay, the Magnets are like pretty much guaranteed to qualify for playoffs, so maybe they'll just, like, we're going to... We're gonna give our players That's a break, and we'll be, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, Exaline just brings like the most standard grab bag of PU mons you could possibly imagine, and Tasker's got like a somewhat more interesting team. It still feels kind of standard, even though four of the mons are like kind of less, you know, like Absol, Simisir, Victory Bell, Metang, not like the most standard yeah. things, but it still feels like a really feel basic like- team. Yeah, I feel like this is more like a typical Tasker style of team. You know, a really heavy offense, uh, spikes, some some, and just a ton of threats basically. So you have like Simi Seer and Absol clearly breaking to get the, the Scarf Primate a clean. And then you have like the balance, I guess you could call it balance Corbett between Matang and uh, the Victory Bell. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say this is more this is more like typical how Tasker would play. Um, and I think it showed in the game he was much he was extremely comfortable. But he just got absolutely destroyed by the hacks. Like he missed everything, and it really came back to bite him in the ass because yeah, it was, Exaline's team was super slow, wasn't it? Yeah, so Exaline's team is it's a little slow. It, it's um, it's a scarf Mesprit and a low in Persian, which isn't too bad, but it's definitely like to the point where Simi is going to be annoying. Uh, but the thing is, Tasker's team had no removal. So Exelon gets up like rocks and spikes really early, and then Tasker misses a fire blast, um, Mind which you, lets. If he, if he didn't miss the fire blast on the frost blast, there would be no spikes. So no, there'd be one layer of spike and rocks, and with no remo- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like no removal in a semi series is pretty weird. Like Tasker's team was quite weak to um, hazards in general, but like because he missed the fire blast, uh, I, he's forced to switch out a semi series, get it more chipped. Um, Frostlass gets to burn the Metang. Then Tasker misses a uh, Meteor Mash on the Frostlass. Uh, forced to now switch out his Metang, get his semi seer chipped again. Uh, lose the Agua Berry option. Frostlass gets another layer of spikes. Finally dies. And then Exelon goes into a little inversion, gets to like freely revenge kill semi seer with Black Hole equi- Eclipse. And like there's just no coming back from that. Um, yeah. It's just it was just a pretty what shitty are you situation do? to be in. That being said, I, I think Exelon definitely had the matchup here. I don't like Tasker's team is just it's weak to hazards. Uh he's basically got like one good check to a lowland Persian, which is just really scary for his team. Like it's just Prime Ape, and Prime Ape was definitely gonna get chipped a lot. Um whereas yeah. Tasker's team just wasn't nearly as threatening to Exelon. Mm-hmm. Um it, it feels that way, but I think I think Tasker like he had he had the tools like if he had the the semi sit in and he had a nasty blow and it was at full health, it, it's very difficult to see how Exaline struggles 
or doesn't struggle best that sorry so yeah uh, he had he had outs he had outs it was, it was he had outs and the game paper. the game did end very close like it was a narrow 1-0 like excellent played the late game really weird it didn't have to come down this close but it ended up being like a narrow 1-0 with like an 18 percent scar from esperate taking out tasker's last mon but yeah overall like the extra spike the burned metang the free revenge killing of simi seer like all of that just gave excellent such a massive early game advantage what yeah mind you was gonna uh, happen? fighting resist like his primary fighting resist is actually mudsdale if you look at how the team yeah. is like composed, because he's debonding the met, he's debonding the frostlass, his mesprit scarf, um, so his resist to uh, what's it called primate is just going to be the using the mudsdale essentially. Um, so Tasker had outs; he had ways of manipulating an X line such that he could um, you know, uh, make it a close game. Like so, like it wasn't a horrendous matchup; like he, could, he just lost, but. Um, yeah, it was just unfortunate to see all that hacks. It would have been very interesting to see how the end game played out without any of the, the fire misses and the dodges and all that type of stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just overall an interesting game. Yeah. On the other hand, x finally gets his win. He was 0-5 in Ubers, which is his main tier, and he's the uh, Uber circuit winner. Um, yeah. So at least he's not 0-5 x now. Uh, but, you know, definitely sucked to take out, like, the big name with just a really dumb game uh but moving on to more like uh first first uh, debuting pu players taking out uh bigger names we have tcr versus tj actually i don't remember who won this i thought tcr won this right yeah tcr won yeah this, T yeah. tcr won versus tj uh tj bring uh simi seer it's a simi seer simi sage plus buffalant w mm -hmm. uh, like just a really weird core here. Like he yeah, brings Bouffalant. He brings Bouffalant, but the team's not really that Lilligant weak in the first place. Like he definitely could have gotten away with not Bouffalant. And then like the rest of the team still constructed really weird because he's got a Golurk, but then no real resist to like anything that Golurk is weak to. Like it's basically Hitmonchan has to check like every Elemental like Hitmonchan is the water check and the ice check and the all that. Alolan Persian has to be the primary psychic check, which is weird. And then TCR basically just has this completely standard like fat girder lilligant balance kind of thing, and basically just wins off having like a normal ass team. Whereas TJ was also kind of weak to the goaler. Like I honestly. I'm kind of roasting TJ's team. Although there were some unfortunate things. Like when your only psychic resist is a low inversion, you run into a Dazzling Gleam Scarf Mesprit. Like that's definitely a bit of a... I don't think it was Dazzling Gleam. I think it was... No, a, it um, was Gleam. I'm, I'm watching the... I linked you the no, game. I, no, 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 not that. I, I, I misspoke. It was a uh, uh, an offensive set. It wasn't Scarf. I believe the Lily game was Scarf. Oh, yeah, maybe actually. Yeah, because um, I, I spoke to TCR after the game. He was uh, he was talking to me, and I was like, "So is the, is the Lilligan scarf, or is it the Mesprit? Uh, is the Mesprit the scarf, right?" And he has it he has it the other way around. So he has Lilligan as the scarf with healing wish, and Mesprit as the offensive breaker, which is a weird combination. But you can chop and change. Yeah, so yeah. Never mind. You're like. right. Um, and that's weird. But actually, the weirdest thing was that TCR had the uh, SD Silvali Dragon. Um, which yeah, happened to be what yeah. ended up cleaning, like by turn 17, this literally just, or by turn 15, it comes in and it like just cleaned TJ. Like yeah. it, it just won on like turn 15 with just a little bit of chip to his team, like getting the Persian weakened, getting up your flame charge, because TJ's team's really slow. Like Alolan Persian and Mach Pan Chipmonchan, and then that's it for speed. Like that's. That's a pretty gosh darn slow team. So any setup sweeper really could have done this, but it turns out it was SD Silvali Dragon, and it and like yep. TJ's team was just really weird and didn't have checks for things. <laughs> like I don't know. This is, this is always the problem when you run offense, right? You usually wanna. The whole point of offense is that you stack a defensive core with your offensive threats, and then you get a fast mod to come in and clean everything while they're all at 3% or whatever, right? 
but this offense team is built in such a way that um, if you had a Pokemon faster than a low low version, which is what 360 speed, mm. you you immediately have a matchup advantage because no matter what TJ does, he's always going to be losing that that speed war. And um, yeah, just to add to that, like Simi Sage and Buffalon is like a an, almost like a niche breaking core combination. I'm not necessarily sure why why be like Simi Sage over Lilligan as. I'm yeah, still I confused why why that's why that's I don't know, maybe like the immediate um, superpower to hit the slashes and I, I like Zimmy Sage is immediately stronger. It's just overall less threatening. But my, my biggest thing is like I think TJ's thought was maybe most mons aren't going to be faster than a lowland Persian unless they like unless you set up. And as for setup mons, uh, Lilligant is checked by the Bouffant, and Omastar is checked by the Hitmonchan, and those are the most common, like, speed-boosting mons. So in that sense, like, to have face A, Dazzling and Mesprit, and B, uh, SD Silvali Dragon with Flame Charge on the same team, that's definitely, like, an unfortunate matchup, but, like, pretty much any speed-boosting thing that wasn't, like, the top threats that he clearly, like, he specifically prepared for those speed-boosting threats and not, like speed control in general if you catch my drift other things that could have been scary like rain dance ludicolo uh once that breaks through hitmonchan um no oh, hail slash is the other big speed boosting threat that was uh checked by hitmonchan so yeah i think it's like specific ones uh caracosta could have been scary because that can often take a mock punch from hitmonchan just random things like that oh no caracosta wins like it straight up wins um I'd say I'd say also like Scarf Aurora plus a fighting resist. That's just like a a thing that you can just do and then he just loses to it. Oh yeah, his team's his real resist is real ice weak. His ice resist is Hitmonchan. Yeah. Like Aurora's plus anything that wants to hit Hitmonchan, you know, like a well, like I said, Ludicolo or pretty much anything. It's it like it's just a weird team that I have to be critical of because I'm not really sure what it's going for is the big thing. Sometimes I can see teams that are weak to stuff, like, yeah, but you clearly have this yeah, I idea think, I think in mind. The nail on the head there. To be honest, with the I don't know what he's going for. It feels like it has no purpose. Like it doesn't have any synergy or cohesion or like any like end game product. Or like mind, like you know what I mean? Like the Yeah, I don't know what it's going for. He's got team. a sub SD Buffalo and a Breaker Simi Sage and then like a uh, Lum, so probably CM Pom Pom, but where does it all go? Like your your late game win con is a little in Persian? Mock punch? I don't and I'm not sure. So definitely some weird stuff, but I think we can move on. That's that's enough roasting TJ. Yeah. Or rather his team. Because, you know what, we're not roasting him, we're just questioning the team. There's nothing wrong with that, my guys. Yep. Uh, LST versus... What are you doing to your mic? <laughs> uh, it was just disconnected for a second. Okay, I'm back. Okay. LST versus uh, Ima. Yep. Uh, you made LST's team, right? Or did he make this one? I don't recall. Yeah, I made this one. Um... It, it, it's a very standard team, so I don't know how much you really want to say about it, but... Um, uh, well, I'll just, I'll explain. It's um, just for def SD uh, Venusaur, not Venusaur, Victory Bell, um, because because LSD like that set, and it's also a pretty decent Lilligant check, so I just thought the best idea for the, or the best idea for a team would just be to um, have Primeape as the main Scarfer, Spikes, and then just see whether, like, how you can win. Because also Victory Bell is a very good versus, like, your typical styles of stall. So you'll it, it tends to win versus that. So the real question came down to, okay, how what's the best idea to beat, you know, the faster teams and the, uh, the faster balanced teams as well, so... We just went with spikes and a primate and a carmine mesprit just to see how it went, and then um, yeah, that's that was the yeah. sort of idea. Yeah, I, I like the concept because you know L Lilligant. You, you start out being I'm not really that scared of Lilligant. Frees up a lot of fun, uh, but instead I'm a brought a double dog team, which obviously. I'm a big double dog enthusiast, so I kind of like what they're going for. It is a weird team. It's it's slow. It's 
blanket check reliant which isn't always bad but like you have skunk plus tangela plus lantern as kind of like a defensive core which blanket checks are like they cover like the top big threats so like you know auroris i can generally pivot into lantern or whatever but then you run into something like oh it's a ludicolo that's just pretty much my favorite mod to go to for like how do you beat a blanket check ludicolo because Oh, my water check is Lantern. Well, that's not good. Oh, my grass check is Oracoria. Well, that's not good. Um, but overall, Double Dog's a really scary offensive core, so the team definitely has some stuff going for it. Yeah. Um, I'd say my biggest concern with Ima's team is that it's, it's just ridiculously slow. Um, coupled with the, the Hazard's presence on LSD's team, um, I was thinking, okay, if we get Hazard's up, uh, Prime Ape's going to be doing a number on his team as well as um, Victory Bell because he'll be getting consistent free switches on the, the Tangela and also on the Lanta. So, well, mainly on the Tangela, of which it's like, that's basically the Prime Ape counter on Ina's yeah. team because you're not going to be switching in your Pom Pom when rocks are up, for example. So it was all going to be about the spikes, the Prime Ape pivoting into the Victory Bell on NXT's team, and if Ima could survive, um, which turned out, yeah, he could for for a while because uh, well there there was a big yeah. thing early on where um I must sets up rocks with his uh, lichen rock as LST goes metang and then I assume predicting metang to go for stealth rock in return I'm goes for drill run just to like get a twenty five percent chip LST just hard mashed uh, went for meteor mash and missed and uh, yeah. that would have been a dead lichen rock which would have been real huge but instead uh um no dead lichen rock. Um, but still, like, early on, it, it's a pretty early thing to be able to come back from. And LST also, like, uh, trades a Violate on Metang for getting a Toxic on Tangela, which really made the game a lot more offensive, because now Metang's not really coming into Lycanroc anymore, not really coming to Stalin anymore, but uh, I'm as Tangela is on a timer, and the Lantern's already been chipped. So really interesting start. Uh, but what, what we ended up seeing was basically just a lot of back-and-forth trades. You know, sack the Skun Tank to chip the Stoutland so you can revenge kill the Stoutland. Sack the Metang to the Oracorio so you can get your Frost Lass in and get Spikes. Um, mm -hmm. Just some some real back-and-forth stuff. Um, and when everything, like, finishes up, you have uh, LST with Prime Ape and Victory Bell. Um trying to take out Ima's Tangela and Pom Pom, and it was just a really weird late-game scenario yeah, yeah. where um, Ima knocks off LST's Scarf, I guess predicting the Victory Bell to come in. Or, like the, the, There's a weird situation where it's Tangela versus Primeape, and LST wants to get his Victory Bell in, but if Ima doubles to Oracorio, it just gets a kill. And there's weird mind games there, and ultimately I think LST was the one who choked in this situation. Like, I'm kind of messed up letting the game get to this scenario. LST kind of traded down to what got, like, better for him, because, frankly, after the Meteor Mash miss, I just had, like, a lot of good momentum. Um, yeah. And it, this is just a situation It's very hard to explain, like, without showing you guys the game. Obviously, it's a podcast. I don't know how much we can do, but basically, LST had the opportunity to go for a U-turn, on Tangela, and if Tangela stays in, then Victory Bell gets to come in, get a kill, and LST wins. And if Tangela switches out, then LST still maybe has a chance if he crits the Tangela. Uh, but by but instead he stays in, risks a gunk shot roll that's like not in his favor even before you calculate gunk shot missing. Uh, does not get the roll, so he should have lost. And then at the very end, last turn. Imazora Corio misses a hurricane so that the victory bell can kill, uh, which was especially shocking because we all assumed Oracorio was Z move, but it turns out it was, I'm assuming, uh, Lycanium Z Lycan rock uh, with rocks and then just some other random item Oracorio. So, yep. real weird, choky game that came down to LST getting some justice last turn. I don't really know what to think about it. Uh, but obviously, LST being on my team, I'll totally take that to the bank. I, the game, but I I thought choked. Um, I th I don't. I think he was right in the fact that there was a, a 50 50 But the way I was thinking of it, like even if it was a fifty fifty, it wasn't in your like in your like it was on your best interests to hope that he chokes rather than play a uh, 
as if it was a proper 50 50 you know what i mean yeah you don't so, i don't like assuming your opponent is going to make like the crazy ballsy play to keep themselves an advantage it's just very yeah, weird. Like, yeah. for Ima to go Oracorio on Prime Ape's U turn would just be ridiculously ballsy and risky and everything. Yeah. He was, pro- he was probably thinking along the lines of, okay, if he clicks Stone Edge here, predicting my Oracorio, I lose the game 100%. Or, you know, he's still fearing that Prime Ape's uh, pressure. Whereas I think U turn was a more, it was more banking on Ima uh, choking, I guess, in quotation marks, by not going into Oracorio. Um, and it ended up, if he did click U-turn on that turn, he would have won the game. But, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, And, you know, in the, in the heat of the moment, you know, you can make some, you can make a decision, you know, under the illusion of one thing. And, you know, things yeah. happen. So, yeah, I think it was justice, justice in the end because, you know, at the end of the day, if we killed the, Ly- the Lycan Rock, the end game would have been much easier for the Primate because then there would have been no 50-50s. It would oh, have for been, sure. Okay, I sacked my Primate here. It would have been much easier, but at oh, the I same time, like, I think I think both sides just kind of ended up choking. And uh, yeah. after the double choke, we kind of just ended up coming out on top due to a hurricane miss. I don't know. It, well, again, like we, we've got it linked. If you want to see exactly what we're talking about, Obviously, I'm I'm putting the links in the description, but it's just it's just weird. Like yeah, yeah. everyone was just a little confused after the game. Like I'm a choked and LST choked, and could he have done this? And the the discussion was pretty weird. Uh, let's see. Next chronological game. Oh, this was uh, Kushalos versus Passion. So another one of your teams uh, being used by Kushalos. Um, Definitely, definitely a weird offensive team. Like I thought this team was weird, but I also liked it a lot in that it's got like a clay doll uh, to try to compress Rock Plus Spin instead of a little and Sand Slash, which is typically the mon that does it. And then it's basically just like your five offensive mons: uh, Frostlass, Smash Costa, Lilligan to dual win cons, and then Pom Pom Primeape is some offensive stuff. Uh, it, it's a real fun offense. If you play well, then you can put out a lot of pressure, but I was definitely a little worried that we might might face things like uh, Hail could have been a little scary. Uh, Electros is just kind of annoying. <laughs> to me, though, this is definitely like more of what... Uh, offense is always going to be a little bit matchup-based because you, you, you can't prep for specific things quite as well, but... To me, this is definitely more of what I imagine offense looking like as opposed to, like, the TJ team that was just, you know, SD, Silvalli, and whatever. Com- yeah, completely the breaking the, completely breaking the team. I mean, to be fair, uh, SD for Silvalli Dragon would literally have to win one speed tie to beat this. This team's actually kind of weak to SD, Silvalli Dragon, but at least we have Scarf Prime to speed tie. Anyway, Passion, on the other hand, has, like, a Laurentis Regice balance that is pretty cool i think it's dual reggie's bro no i think laurentis reggie because reggie rock is is a common thing it's the laurentis reggie's core that's kind of funny yeah but it's dual reggie's you know you don't you, yeah right. it, okay it's oh, it's yeah. dual reggie's no, and overall dual, dual reggie's, reggie's both of them being weak to fighting yeah this team is kind of fighting weak but other than that i really do uh like what it looks like and it's definitely not like the worst week to fighting between swana and alola chu and lorantis you, you got some ways to stop a girder and a scarf primate but uh definitely like scarf primate on kushlo's side uh hugely useful in a matchup like this because passion's team's just a little bit weird but uh honestly a little more standard than i expected from passion and a really cool team overall i i, I genuinely like it and red is a is a funny is a funny Pokemon. Uh, 100%. I think uh, P- Passion's team, or Manny's team, Manny was the builder behind that. Oh, Manny um, built it. That's why it has red dice. Okay. Yes. I should have so, I should have guessed that. Fuck, we got to yeah. move a little faster. That's okay, though. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's a cool team because you have the two blanket checks, and then the way he decided to go with this team is to go down the... Uh, the balance route, you know, with the with the with the more, I guess it's like standard, you know, breaker plus scarf a core, and then you have like uh, Lorantis and Swana to also provide offensive pressure, but 
provide some support for the um, the Reggie Ice, Reggie Rock defensive core. So like Lorantis had aromatherapy on it. So if it got toxic, uh, or if the uh, the Reggie Ice or the Reggie Rock got toxic, it could click aromatherapy yeah. and heal them up. Yeah, aromatherapy. And, uh, this one was obviously defog, so it could uh, so it could do the do the things do the things with the uh, the, the stealth rocks and the spikes. Yeah, I was gonna say aromatherapy is a fun tech because like the first turn of the game was a really interesting trade off because passion goes for Stone Edge on Kushless's uh, Frost Lass uh, with the Prime Ape and Kush retaliates by Wisping the Prime Ape, so it's a really fast trade off. Where like spikes would have been real good for Kushless because he can pressure Defog Swana quite nicely, hard to remove, chips most of the team, and Prime Ape real good for passion. Um, the Scarf Prime is just you know generally useful, especially when you're trying to face down a Lilligan, you want to have a Scarf Prime Ape. Um, so early on, this is like a big trade-off where they're both sacrificing something they want. And uh, the fact that uh, Lorant has actually had aromatherapy definitely made this a bit of like a surprisingly better first turn for Passion than you might have expected. And I think, Jad, did your mic disconnect again or something? Did I disconnect? I'm here. Oh, never mind. I thought you disconnected. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so uh, yes. that that was a pretty weird start, and then it gets a little worse as Kush misses. Kush misses another Will O Wisp on Passion's Reggie Rock, uh, which means Frostlass basically dies without getting another useful burn and without getting up any spikes at all. I don't know how much it mattered because of the aromatherapy, um, but it, it definitely looked like a really bad start for Kushlos. Like Passion gets rid of the Frostlass, he's got aromatherapy, so the burn primate not really much of an issue. He's got up rocks. Kushlos is pretty much nothing, and then Kushlos literally just goes into Caracosta. Um, takes the Toxic as he smashes, smashes again, and uh, gets three kills with Caracosta, and suddenly this game is like looking pretty good because Caracosta is a really scary Mon. And that's kind of what happens when you got your blanket checks. They kind of just take plus three Stone Edges and die. Yeah, plus four, actually. But oh, you're right, plus four. That, plus four. Yeah. There was, there was a crit there on the Regirock, which uh, meant that he got three instead of two, and that could have shaped the game a bit more. But my counter-argument to that is that, um, well, if we'd got the Wisp buff, um, Kush would have had the option to go for the Hex uh, the next turn. Or yeah, I'm not would have... that concerned about the, like it, it definitely It definitely helped us. But the problem to me really is, like, no matter what Passion sacks, Kushlos had a lot of options, and Kushlos ended up playing the end game like, super safe, so it came down to last Mon. But yeah. it really didn't have to, because Kushlos' Scarf Primeape, like, pretty much no matter what Passion sacks, either Passion has no offensive output, or Scarf Primeape's going to be a huge threat, because you had to get rid of, like, your Swana, your Lorantis, or something. And basically, yeah, like... Exactly. After after that uh, smashing, it literally just turned into they both trade a Pokemon until Kushlos wins because he got more kills. That's that yeah. is all. That's all that happens, and that's all that needed to happen. Um, and it's pretty. The, the, the game started out real explosive with with dodges and smashing twice and all that, and then it ended up just very very calm trading out. There wasn't a lot passion could do to come back you know yeah there wasn't very many options you know because there was no there was no like aggressive option that you could make so like oh if i make this aggressive play i'll be in a, a decent spot because mm -hmm. uh, in reality it was just a trade war at that point and he was on the, the worst side of it so um yeah i just think it showcases to be honest how potentially good caracosta is and if you a lot of people make the mistake um by toxicing it and then just sort of letting it get kills, you know, because you know at plus at plus four, I think Costa is probably one of the most scary Pokemon in the tier. Like you cannot let that thing smash. Well, twice. yeah, I think I think if anything smashes twice, it's it's pretty it's pretty terrifying. But yeah, Caracosta is yeah. really cool as people are starting to um use it. More. Like we hadn't seen very much Caracosta at all until like a couple recent weeks of exhibition. Uh, where it's really been putting some work, but Omastar also had a good showing this tour so far. So, I I, I think yeah. Karakos is just coming back to be like a competitive a comp a, another smasher in competition because now that Primeape's the main scarfer, that Aqua Jet real nice. 
Uh, but we got like okay. 10 minutes to go over the next four games. So let's do it. Moving Let's along. Uh, I feel like some of them are memes anyway, so it doesn't really Yeah, the, we are getting to more meme games. So Robert Alphonse versus Rexis. Robert Alphonse brings screens offense again, and Rexis has like a cool, fun-looking balance team that at this – I'm pretty sure he built this. I think Rexis at this point is building, even if it was approved by Tasker. Um, and Robert, Robert Alphonse just never got – screens going very much he got he got the smash with turtonator once oh no i'm sorry this is the, the, i'm thinking um robert alphonse got screens going and then turtonator basically just completely ate rexus alive and then he misses a draco on the mesprit <laughs> um turtonator dies without getting the kill that it needed because draco missed and at that point, Robert Alphonse was just screwed. And it got even worse because he got Agron on their screens. And then Rexus revealed Glare Defensive Drampa, paralyzing the Agron. It gets fully paired. It can't do anything. And Robert Alphonse's final win conditions are Quiver Dance Lilligant versus a team with a Drampa. Um, Lycanroc versus a team with a Primeape. Oh, no, the Lycanroc was rocks. It's not even Wincon. And Swords Dance Silvali Ghost, which just was not Sucks. enough to carry because it sucks it, it's it's just bad yeah. like this was just really sucky because rexus was not prepared for screens which i think is a big mistake on his part robert alphonse has been using screens quite a bit he's been touting screens like come on uh, he rexus was not pre prepared for like turtonator at all and then dodged yeah. a draco and pff, what what are you gonna do yeah, I feel like um, it's not, it's less so that he's unprepared for screens, but more so that he has sort of slow, passive things on a team. I wouldn't say it's that slow. He's got a Lowland Persian plus Primeape. Like that's yeah, like it's not weak. It's not weak to to screens. It's just you need to be uh, extremely careful. And also with having a Electros, you need to be pretty sure that you're not taking. Or you have the ability to take the hits, like the physical hits, that Electros doesn't want to take. You don't want Electros to be taking, um, you know. Like yeah, Electros that was weird. That that Agron's. was that was very weird because he's got Electros plus Drampa, and then his Stoutland switch in is Quillfish. Like, eh, it's, yeah, it's Quillfish. It you you can get some that. Helmet and Waterfall chip, but like especially Stoutland plus Healing Wish, I can imagine being incredibly annoying. Um, like, I don't know. I, I, I do like Rexus's team overall. It was going for like some kind of glare drampa fat thing. I don't think it's like that problematic or anything. It's just, especially versus Robert Alphonse, I don't like bringing a team like this. It's, and it showed like he would have died to literally Robert Alphonse setting up screens the first couple turns, smashing with Turtonator turn three, would have won if. Well, no, it wouldn't have straight up won because Rexus had to stall out screens and then get Primeape in. But it would have done so much. There's no coming back from that. And the Draco dodge is the only thing that kept him in this game. So yeah, um, yeah. I just want just as like a final note. I think you know Robert Alphonse is like a it's, a it's a weird player where it's just sort of like he can bring anything. So, but I don't like that Rexus tried to bring something standard. I feel like this if you had like the opportunity to. To bring something a bit less standard and a bit more out there, a bit faster, um, it would probably would have helped him a lot more than just sort of playing it standard and just sort of seeing how it goes. Yeah, yeah. I don't hate the team, but for who you're fighting, mm, I don't know. It's probably not the best idea, yeah. Because those right. those screens are scary. Okay. Ibigaro versus Shane Ghoul. You want to take lead on this game because I don't even know what happened. Like this was a weird uh, one. Yeah. So basically, one, one day I was in call with Dibs, and um, he was like, "I have to build for exhibition," and I'm like, "Oh, who, uh, who are you building for?" And he says, "I don't know, some offense guy." And then I thought, "Oh, okay. What do you want then?" And he says he wants go like with an Electros. So I put six months together, um, and then he says, "You're fired." And then he uses the exact same team. Uh, but with Frostlass over the Quillfish, which was there originally. Um, one of the one of the main techs on that team was actually Zap Cannon Electros, because um, Zap Cannon's the best move in the game. And then uh, uh, it ended up coming down to um, 
well, Dibs didn't like that, so he changed it, and then Shank will change it back. So, uh, <laughs> wait, it was actually Zap Cannon on Zap Cannon. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was also Iron Fist Dynamic Punch, but that was a mistake. Oh my God. Oh uh, well. Okay. Uh, so, so yeah. yeah, and then it, it, Evie brought uh, a uh, a Grass Spam team. Yeah, Simi Sage plus made... Lilligan our second Simi Sage, and Simi Sage is still garbage. So. Yeah. Oops. I mean the the big pro I like the idea. I had a team very similarly built, uh, but with like a nasty plot Agua Simi Sage and a three attacks Lilligan. Um, but yeah, Evie Evie messed up a little bit because uh, she. Uh, Quiver danced uh, like straight up on the Electros, uh, predicting him to just be like scared of the offensive pressure. Yeah, predicting Shane Gould to be scared of sleep. Evie to Garo Quiver dances, yeah. Shane Gould just vaults with Electros, gets to go right to Scarf Prime Wave and kill it. And that basically just yeah. murdered like all of Evie Garo's offensive momentum right there, which really sucked. Uh, this was definitely a replay where you can kind of think like, oh, if the Lilligan was a different set, Evie Garo could have just won. In this case, uh, Z Sleep yeah. Powder. Is especially or even just sleep powder, like sleep powder and electros, yeah, just sleep powder. and then like you have a 50 50 if you can go right to prime up or not. But Z sleep powder, especially, would have literally just won there. Uh, because Shane Ghoul's yeah. alone sand slash dies like turn one, turn two, yeah, turn two, turn two, because, uh, which is definitely the like damage on the mud still. huge for a Lilligan. But instead, I think Eva Girl said after the game it was Quiver Dance three attacks, didn't even have sleep. No, no, no. And no, because no, it, it was Encore, it was the Encore. Oh, the Encore! You're right, you're right. Um, yeah. Which also could have been useful, like if Ivigero managed to get that speed boost up, because that's what the Encore does, right? Boost speed. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. 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 But yeah. the problem was like Shingo locked into Flamethrower. Um, that was not really a good opportunity to get to use it. So I don't know, like. Zion Corlilligan actually didn't have a bad matchup, and Evigo sacked Simi Sage like just to chip Electros into range for the Lilligan. Uh, but the Lilligan just never really got going. Like there was never really yeah, a time where it could do something, even though it was in theory like a really solid matchup. Just nothing really happened. Evigo never really got offensive pressure off, and Shane Gould kind of just had a fairly uh, easy win to pick up because of that, because the Lilligan just never got going. Yeah, that's the that's the this is the struggle with Lilligan is that um, if you quiver dance or if, versus low teams, it tends to do a lot better. But when you have like a, a primate plus Volt Sand and stuff, it will it will very it will seldom sweep because um, the offense team will always have the way, the the way out unless you have the perfect set. So, yeah, I mean, and that is why Z Encore, or Z Sleep, or whatever, is still like good sets to run, but they've kind of been taking the backseat to, you know, Z Aromatherapy or Z Break Breakneck Blitz and things like that. And, uh, I also just want to quickly shout out the uh, the Poison Silver Adley with the, the Poison Fang of the Air Slash, because I thought that was a heat tech. That was hilarious. I'm not sure what Air Slash is for, to be perfectly honest. Good. But do you not get to badly poison it with Poison Fang? Is that not already what Poison Fang is for, to be able to poison them? No, because you, you, you use the Poison Fang for Regirock and Mudsdales and that type of stuff. So yeah, whatever. Uh, it's, it's like it's like roll compression. Like you can compress the Primate check and the Gerda check in one slot. I guess. Anyway, yeah, not much happened there. Uh, this next game is the game where I was like, the screens never really got going. I mixed them up. So you have Ham, 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 Ham versus Lycans. And Ham brings the screens offense and just never really gets anything going. Like he gets up rocks turn one, he gets up screens turn five, and then like does get to quiver, uh, does get Lilligant in, doesn't even quiver dance. And then I don't really know what happened, but somehow... Even though he got screens turn five, rocks turn one. By turn twelve, uh, Lycans is up a full. Lycans is up a full mon. There's no screens, and Ham just has like three offensive things that very clearly can't win the game for him. Like literally nothing happened to ever really get to win the game. Screens just, you know, screens is like ride or die on offensive pressure, and Ham just got absolutely nowhere. Completely bodied. Yeah, I, I would say the 
the key thing that I was looking at from Ham's team, I was wondering this the entire battle because Teddy actually built the team that Lycans was using. So uh, you can see it has a lot of Teddy Teddy like mannerisms. So he has like the vault the vault turn core with Lantern and Mesprit, and then the Stoutland, the banded Stoutland plus the Scarf Dodrio core. Um, so I was thinking like during the game, where where's Ham's like uh, fighting resist? I was just like genuinely wondering like. Is what's his plan versus a Gerda? Is it to like yeah. drain Gerda? No, the, I mean the plan is just ligand, no. The plan is just it screens off, and so I kind of just hit buttons. Um, that didn't yeah, go but so well. Like, you usually have to you usually have to have like a, um, a like a plan at least. Like you don't just run screens off and to say like, okay, when the Gerda comes in, what do I do? Yeah, oh, I just lose. That's like, why this didn't work because I don't really think there yeah. was much of a plan. It was just I'm gonna hit screens buttons. Oh look, I lost. Yeah, that's basically it. And yeah, then you also add to the fact that Scarf Dodrio is actually pretty decent speed control. Um, like it, it can revenge kill anything at plus one. So or anything that sets up at a plus one speed uh, mm -hmm. in the meta. So like immediately the Jinx isn't really that threatening, even if it's the lovely kissed and e like the uh, the Lilligan as well, unless it's like uh, yeah, sleep powder. you need to get the plus two boost to get past the Scarf Dodrio. So I definitely sucked. Yeah, so it's... Um, uh, I don't know, just really weird text. Not as weird as our final game, but, like, weird and just not as well put together. I don't know who built it. I don't know what they were going for, but that, the they, they, get a, they get a question mark out of 10. No, they don't get a question mark. They get a 2 about 10. 2 for effort. 2 for effort? Is that how you spell yeah, effort in Britain? With a yeah. 2? Okay, come on. We gotta yeah. We got to finish the last game. So... Okay. Uh, Roses versus Tony. Roses brings a Katut team because Katut couldn't play this week, I guess. Some absolute, some absolute heat stuff. You got you got a Drampa and you got a Scyther. Uh, the Scyther is accompanied by question mark hazard control. I'm pretty sure it was defog Drampa, but at preview, you, nope. you're like, it's either no, <laughs> it's either no hazard control or it's defog Drampa or it's defog Sensu, all of which are weird. Then it turns out the Alolan Dug Trio is the running general. is running Dig, and the Oracorio Sensu is running Z Feather Dance Calm Mind, which is like, okay, that actually seems kind of cool, but if you run into Toxic Alone Sand Slash, that doesn't really help you. Like, def buffing your defense doesn't help if you get Toxic. Toxic's really common. Right. Tony or Reggie Rock, right? T uh, Tony did bring Toxic alone Sand Slash, and it's like, well, that tech failed, but I really do think it was cool. The rest of the techs, I don't know about. Dig a little in Doug Trio, that's just dumb. And is it was it Scyther with no removal? Um, it was defensive Scyther with Scyther as the removal. Oh, right, right, right. I... It, was, it was counter Toxic Roost Defog off the top of my head with Max Fist Death. Okay, so moving on. Uh, Tony's got a pretty fine team. It's it's very standard. There, there's a bunch of things I'd consider a little annoying, but I think it kind of trades off like not being super ridiculously weak to any of the top threats for just kind of like I don't know. It's not that. I mean, it's it it loses to Gerda. <laughs> It, it's like not it's good. Up, it's just... bad versus Girder, but I wouldn't say it's straight. Like it's pretty bad versus Girder, but I wouldn't say it straight up loses. I think really the bigger crime is like it's very reliant on Lilligan winning the game. I don't know how else yeah. you're winning the game if if it's not your Lilligan. Yeah, it's okay. just like yeah. This is this is something that I also realized is that the team just sort of it's got offensive pressure in Kangaskhan, but it's got no way of forcing Kangas switches or Lilligan switches in that way um, to just sort of like struggle. You know what I mean? Like. Usually you'd have spikes to sort of, um, you know, whittle at the Regirock or whittle at the, uh, let's just give Buffalon, right, for example. But this team, it just sort of, it lets them come in, lets them counter it, and then you're making the switch. And then it's just sort of, I feel like this could have been like a really good week to showcase like, here's a standard team and here's like a non-standard team. And look how the non-standard team wins because it's... Um, it, like the, the standard team has has some flaws, like has some fundamental issues, uh, but it's a specs team, and really, I think it was more Roses self self imploding uh, than than Tony really winning this game.
That's true, but I don't even know if it was as much Roses as just, what was he going to do? Uh, Roses also brings the defensive glare dramp attack, which is like, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, defen- the defensive Scyther was funny, but ended up losing to Kangaskhan because he toxic instead of countering, which is like, well, that's... that's Oh, right. It was Scarf Electros. That was the other attack I completely forgot. Uh, Scarf Superpower Electros ends up revenge killing Kangaskhan, which was absolutely hilarious. Um, unfortunately, the last Alolan Raticate, I don't think they even think we ever see what it can do because Tony has a girder and that pretty much checks everything. I believe, I believe. Um, don't quote me on this. I think it's some it, bulk it, up. With, uh, like, it was uh, Iapapa. Well, we know it was Iapapa Berry. And yeah. actually, if we calc the damage, it might also be thick fat because it did thirty-seven. I think it might have been thick fat by mistake. By mistake, I think you it think. Might have, yeah, by mistake. I can't remember really. Okay, but so I, I can confirm it. What I can confirm it was thick fat. I cannot confirm if it was a mistake or not. But basically, it didn't you know do very much. And I like roses. The Oracorio was kind of where he had to win, and because it was Toxic Sand Slash plus AV Eel, um, that couldn't really do the trick. Uh, sub Toxic yeah, pr- Sub Toxic even... Protect Dig Illo and Ductrio. Like, I appreciate the attempt to stall out things, but oh my head! And then yeah, I don't know this. It the, the gimmicks the fun. gimmicks like maybe could have actually gone somewhere with a better matchup. But none of them was scary enough in the matchup to actually pull anything out. So Roses kind of just, was just trash. like Rose you said, just imp- imp- imploded. Yeah, just like just don't just don't use that scene. Like if you, unless I'm pretty sure he just said, oh, "Just give me anything. I don't really care." So, <laughs> but the kids, the kids just gave him just gave yeah, him no, I, anything in his build-up. I can't imagine Roses is that cut up over losing the game, but. Yeah, this was no, just. Like, this, is, this is what I imagine Kitat's builder looks like with all these types of teams with like dig, sub protect, toxic, uh, 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 dug trio, like all the sitting there waiting. Well, to no, I, I, don't think that's, like, I don't think that's I don't think that's fair. Kitat is known as like a gimmick, more gimmicky player, but I think there's a like, big difference between the, like the dig alone dug trio and then like strength sap growth victory bell on sun which actually like had a concrete purpose and did a specific thing in a tour game like i, I don't think this is yeah you know like i said I, I, with a better matchup this the gimmicks might have worked in fact if katat was using the team with the gimmicks i bet he would have had the matchup and won just just saying just throwing it out there <laughs> yeah so he would have brought a completely different team just, just uh, also uh, cam just won for exhibition so we're up to one yay Sweet. Guys, if you don't know, this so, this this week did like if we win the week, then we get second to last, and if we lose the week, we get last place. So we're really hoping to not lose the week. Yeah, we still have both our PU slots as well. And PU has been out. I believe um, if we um, if uh, we took our PU slots and uh, Arafine out, uh, wait no, our PU slots combined and Arafine, if we took those out, we would have seven total wins. I think something stupid like that. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's uh, let, let's just move on to the. Uh, yeah. Uh, I actually gotta go, so we're gonna skip a Jed's gimmick corner and prediction. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. It's. We'll just we'll just let the gimmick corner be the the poison fangs poison Silver valley. That was a, that was a fire set. I like that set. Oh yeah. Well, um, I don't know. Did did any of the games that we just showed off? Some of them were your sets. So, were there any gimmicks um, there you were particular? Uh, the, I guess the Spadef SD victory bell can be the gimmick corner yeah uh it's like the lilligant yeah. check but like because you have sd you can still function as like the wall breaking kind of victory bell i'm not the biggest fan but i think it like works fine like it, it's okay on yeah. specific stuff so that's fine yeah it also shits on stall so that's that's fine as well oh yeah because uh, you know, stall can't toxic it so you basically gotta try to get kuno in at some point mm, yeah then you just jab it yeah free try does like 40 i think Wait, really? Yeah, it's something really stupid on a sped F victory bell. Um, God, but yeah, it's, damn. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a super. Sweet well, to be fair, they uh, mo- they mostly run more like frost breath now, which is stronger than freeze dry, but still. Uh, yeah, I don't think frost breath, like even frost breath, I don't think it does that much more. I don't no, think, I mean, I you, it's like, only twenty. It's only twenty more effective base power, so that's not going to do. Yeah. Anyway, yes, yeah, sped F SD victory bell. 
is just another one of those things because this mod can run like a gazillion sets and just mostly do the same exact thing no matter which one is running. Yeah. Plus, it's fun it's to just, run a Spadef mod and still check Girder. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Well, I mean, you don't really check Girder, but uh, I mean, you do a little like bit. This. Like you can strength, you can strength sap its attack back down, so you can kind of annoy it. Yeah. Like, you can you can you can annoy it in a pinch, but you don't really need. Uh, it's not your main you switch in, really but like yeah, yeah, yeah. it it can one v one a girder. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd go with that. Um, yeah, is that it? I think that's it. I think that's it. This was literally all the free time I have until Saturday. So, yeah. oops. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you all for listening. We'll be back next week with the final uh, group stages of smog on exhibition don't even think there's been any pu games yet so it's gonna be a surprise to us too we'll have a fun learning experience together uh mm -hmm. yeah see y'all